back sandbar ends to part two, putting back together the sandbar carburetor that uh, part one was taking apart and cleaning. And so I just wanted to do the reveal of the parts that came out of the ultrasonic bath and holy cow, it's crazy how clean it is compared to before. I mean, before it basically, <laughs> Before it kind of looked, you know, pretty nasty like this, this one is pretty nasty. Uh, what the, but yeah, I mean, it's like, look at how shiny silver that is. But yeah, I'll show that stuff. But, um, I went and took them out of the bath. I did spray them. I sprayed all the little ports with the choke cleaner just to make sure we got everything out of there uh, because there was a lot of dirt. I went through two uh, like cycles of fluid in there because the first cycle was just really nasty. And so I put in fresh fluid and the second time around it came out great. So choke cleanered all the little ports, uh, blew everything out with the air compressor. So it should be pretty dialed. So let's take a look at um, what we're dealing with now. But check this out. I mean, this thing, look at that throttle linkage and all that stuff looks brand new. Like, I couldn't even clean that by hand as well as that came out, mainly because I'm lazy. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, set it and forget it. Look at that. It is so, so stinking clean. It's crazy. I did take this part off. I don't know the name of it. But you can take that off. It's a 10 mil. Um, if you take it out, there's a copper washer. Uh, it's actually a screen. So gas comes through that. And then, you know, causes the float to do its deal. So uh, you can take that off and clean it. Shoot backwards through it to really clean the screen. Um, so I did take that off already. Cleaned the screen inside of there very carefully. Because you don't want to poke a hole in it. Um, so that came off and cleaned sprayed all the ports on the top of the venturi look at that that's just insane the uh, ultrasonic bath is a game changer wild and then cleaned a bunch of other parts so right now we're going to get everything set up to bolt this back onto the side with our new piss and choke which is going to be perfect because it's going to be all matchy silver with everything else and yeah, that's probably going to be the toughest part is putting all that back on because um, we're going to go off another carb so we can make sure to put it on correctly because it's kind of, it's not really tricky. It's just there's a lot of moving parts you got to put back together correctly. But yeah, and then I also got some O-rings in today, which is perfect because if you go and do this yourself, the gasket kits, for whatever reason, Subaru does not provide two O-rings for the top little uh, top little shaft, Chingus. And so you need one for that. And then you also need one for that guy. But they only give you one O-ring. I have no idea why. I don't know if they expect you just to replace one bad one. Or if you're... I don't know, because they give you gaskets for the whole carburetor. So... Anyways, I went and bought some metric O-rings, so we'll replace both of those. Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and start getting this thing all back together. All right, let's start putting it together. So we're going to start with the top first, the Venturi. You're going to put your seal in there. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but one end is round and one end is pointed. I should say edge. Uh, I put the pointed edge up. Uh, then we got to make sure we put this back in, which not used to that on the newer carburetors. So don't forget that plastic thing. I don't know what it does. And then let's go ahead and tighten the cap down. And I would just snug them up. Don't go too gorilla strength on it. Okay, so we got that on. All right. So now. Actually, we can put the uh, accelerator pump diaphragm chingadera 
on here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a little sticky, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a lube. Oh, much better. Let's uh, put on the bolt. So we got a spacer. Go spacer first, or washer, I should say. Washer first. Lock washer. And then the nut. And of course, we'll just get this one nice and snugged up. Good. Yeah, I like I like that. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm trying to keep it in frame. It's hard for me to see. Okay. I like that. That's really, 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 really smooth. So we got that on. Cool. Good deal. Now let's move on. So uh, let's see, do I, let's put the, let's put the top on. It's good to have some, uh, engine, engine grease, assembly grease for O-rings and such. We're going to put the one O-ring onto this guy here. Put a little bit of assembly lube on it. And we're going to need our paper gasket for the top. I don't think we need to. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can put the top on before we put the side on. It doesn't make a difference. All right, so make sure we're clean. Make sure you get all the gasket material off before you go and put all this stuff together. All right, so we put all our screws for the top over there. So let's get the top on. Okay, so same deal with tightening the top. Kind of go in a pattern. Snugged up. And I'm going to have to clean my own carburetor after this. I can't believe how good it looks. So shiny. Everyone likes some shiny parts. Tight. Okay. Good deal. Okay, so now, I think, yeah, we can put the bottom on too. It don't make no difference. So, this is where we're going to need the O-ring out of the kit. Because Subaru feels like they don't need to provide it. Which I don't understand, quite understand why. So I'm going with a uh, seven by one and a half. I think that's the one we're gonna use. Let's see. That looked like the closest size. There wasn't a perfect size one. It was close. As long as we get a good seal in there, that's all we need. So let's see if that has a good fit. Yeah, that should work. Make sure we lube it so it doesn't get hung up we want to make sure that it slips over and doesn't push on it push it down okay and then we're also going to need that but before we go and do that we need to put our float you just want to make sure that your needle is moving up and down see that moving up and down with the float okay all right let's put the bottom on now okay so now that we're getting ready to put the bottom on 
we need to put our accelerator pump on. So let's go ahead and do that. So you got your boot, you got little mounting hardware, your mounting spot. So basically, basically, put the boot through the hole like so. those want to go to bed here pretty soon and then we're gonna feed that guy and you'll see that there's a line that is where the top of the boot is gonna go okay so now this is what I like to do I like to put a little bit of grease on this part because I don't want it to get hung up and flip I don't want it to flip up inside that would be bad your accelerator pump would already be messed up before you even got to use it. So, put some grease on that. Then we take our long spring. Get out of there, screw. And that goes on the bottom like that. And then that will go into there. And we'll feed it in there. Kind of push it up and down a little bit. Make sure it's moving nicely. Feels good to me. So then we'll put the screws in. It's working because it's shooting out some uh, cleaning fluid. So it's a good sign. All right. So now let us put this on now that we've got it all ready make sure that the float doohickeys all seems to be working happily okay make sure our seals are all good all right perfect all right so screws with the wire looms on the outs or on the front side of the carburetor for the solenoid make sure just give it a couple taps make sure the float needle came back down we don't want that getting stuck that would be bad i think the patitos are calling me all right had to go put the patitos away all right so we got everything Tighten back up. Everything's on. Let's go ahead and put the accelerator pump assembly on here. So this was on the inner hole. That comes around, goes through the accelerator pump. Screw, so we go lock washer closer. Closest to the carb. I think those are going crazy. All right. That tightened up. Make sure that we're working. Feels pretty solid. I'm going to give this a little bit of a some lube sounds a little sounds a little bit too clean oh yeah much better <clears throat> it's almost like it cleaned it too well nice okay that feels really good so now we can put our Bring back on. Okay, good deal. Okay, so now the fun part <clears throat> putting back the putting this guy on <sighs> along with all the hardware. That goes with it. So let's see how 
Let's see how this goes. If I can remember. Okay. So here comes the fun part. Kind of give this some some pre lube. That's gonna go in here. So now we have these spacers. I just want to make sure that I put stuff on in an order so I don't have to take it all back off again if I forget something. So there's a spacer first. Let's see. Yeah, so it goes spacer and then the arm, and then there's one more little spacer. Okay. Now we can get this screw in there. And then this mechanism. Goes on. Like such. Okay. All right. So that's on there. That's working, okay. Let's see, but we do need this. We kind of need this out of the way to get the piston choke on. So the trick is we gotta get this back screw on first. And to get that back screw in first, you kind of have to get the throttle linkage out of the way. Okay, we just need to get that one in there. Okay, so now that we got that in there, we can work on the rest. That was the main one. Just making sure we can get that in there. Okay, so now we can put this doohickey on, which was the long one. Went all the way through. Now we still have this, this screw. Okay, so while I was putting this whole contraption back together, you're gonna notice there, you're gonna see this, it's the choke flap, basically. It's like the return. So when you pull it all apart, it's going to slip out of, of that spring there. That guy right there. It's going to slip out of that when you take it all off. So when you go and put it back together, make sure you put that back through the spring hole. Otherwise, the choke flap will not return. And I put it together and I'm like, the choke flap's not returning. I didn't realize it, it came out of that spring so you got to make sure that you put it back together with it back through that spring. Otherwise, the choke will not go back. So just pointing that out as I'm putting it all back together. Um, make sure you put that choke flap return spring back in there or you're going to uh, have some problems. So we're getting there. Again, this is the first time I've taken that thing off. So, I was bound to do something incorrect, and that's what it was. I did not realize that. So, thank goodness I have another one here. I could see that it was something as simple as the little choke return spring. So, not too bad taking that thing off. 
main concern is just getting all the springs all back. Well, that one spring, I should say, back into the correct spot. <clears throat> okay. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory on most of this stuff, but I'll show you what I mean. I don't have the flap in there quite yet, but it wasn't returning. It was getting, this was staying where it was at because it wasn't on that, that spring. So, bada bing, bada boom. Everything is happy. Since I have it off, I'll hit it with a little bit of lube. Now, let's finish putting the piston choke back on new hardware so that's nice looks all nice and clean it's the fourth time this has been off <laughs> okay so first goes the washer then goes your cotter pin And it's very small, so you can pretty much do it with your finger. All right. Cool. Got that on. So your little cotter pin. Don't forget that. When you put the chicken piston choke back together. So now let's put the heat shield. Let's put the little shield back on for the hundredth time. Fifth time's a charm. So... Holding. Holding. So that's good. All right, now we got to put the flap, choke flap back on. So if you notice, we have an F for fun times uh, for the front. So obviously, make sure you put that facing the front. Otherwise, your choke will probably work backwards and not work at all don't get too crazy on tightening these because it's pretty soft don't want to strip them out okay that's real good not sticky everything's moving freely all right so far so good with the new piston choke. Don't drop it. <laughs> All the other <gasps> clean parts. Man, it looks real good. Looks really, really good. And I do apologize if I've been holding this thing out of frame. I cannot see what the camera's looking at half the time. So, so if you are wondering where your cold idle is, this is your cold idle screw. Now, if you're wondering how your cold idle and all that works, this controls your cold idle based on the temperature of the coolant. So when this valve moves, it's pushing, it's pushing this guy around, which is changing this. So this is your cold idle screw. So if you're idling super, super high when it's cold, you can adjust it. I think it's supposed to be around 2000 RPM when it's cold and you're warming up. Um, but if it's super low, you can adjust the cold idle to uh, idle a little bit higher when it's cold to warm up quicker. But that's what basically, that is what this guy is doing is your cold idle. So that's your cold idle set screw. And then once you're warmed up, this is your idler, your idle screw right here. So you obviously want to mess with that after it's completely warmed up. This you only mess with when it's cold. <clears throat> so it might be out of adjustment. It looks like someone was messing with it. So when this gets to the new owner, he's going to have to probably do some cold idle adjustment and uh, get that set up. 
but at least he'll have a working carburetor. Okay, so now that we have the whole choke uh, assembly parts, all that back on our flap, back on the flap is on the screw, so it return. I mean the spring, so it returns. Piston chokes all set, set up. Your accelerator pump is all hooked up. Everything's good. Um, I like to go around with this 3-in-1 uh, multi-purpose oil. Uh, it's kind of like gun lube, essentially. It smells like gun lube. Uh, you can just hit all the moving spots. It was a little crispy at first because it was like almost so clean. That was just metal on metal. But I put that lube in there and everything is just feels so much happier. So much happier. Plus, I mean, this thing, besides this and this looking dirty, this thing looks brand new. Okay, so my phone's going to die. But you pretty much saw how I put everything back together. How well it looks cleaned up if you use an ultrasonic bath. And yeah, so this is one that I am selling. Uh, somebody is in dire need of a carb, so I told them I would uh, clean this one up and rebuild it. All new solenoids. So we got the solenoids, the air fuel solenoid, the fuel cutoff solenoid, which is very straightforward on how to do that. I have other videos on how to put those in. Uh, basically the same as taking it off. Not very difficult at all. So, I'm going to end this here, but uh, yeah, so, oh man, that's so awesome. Everything works freaking amazing. That piston choke is holding, this is holding, so the diaphragms and these guys are perfect. Everything is super clean. Got the float, hopefully that little needle doesn't get stuck in the meantime, but I heard that if the float needle does get stuck, you can always kind of tap the bowl or something or tap the carburetor to get that needle so um that just happens when a carburetor sits for a little bit the needle can get stuck but uh yeah man that's awesome and i just got to put the thermal valve back in well i think i'm gonna uh call it a day um putting the solenoids on is real easy uh, i don't really need to show that but uh yeah Hopefully that was helpful. Um, mainly just have to do it yourself and you'll figure it out as you go along. It's not that difficult. Just take your time. Don't rush anything. Don't want to break anything. And uh, be sure to either watch this or take pictures or videos or something. So you have something to look back on when you go to put it back together. Uh, yeah. So if you need parts or anything, okgarage.com. I got all the parts that I'd shown here. That I've shown here to redo the carb um, or obviously all the parts can be found in Japan uh, or carbs found in Japan auctions all that good stuff if you want to do that yourself but yeah thanks for watching guys not sure what I'm going to do next um, yeah just trying to get caught up with everything in the holidays it's been crazy but hopefully this was helpful and yeah I'll see you guys on the next one.